What you're looking at is a video I made five and a half years ago about the player Huang, titled The Legend of Huang, where I talked about the meta that Huang had created in a world where no one played that way, no one chose to do what he was doing. There were lots of militia involved, lots back then, and back then it was only Hun Wars for him, and it was only Hun Wars for the majority of people that played the game. And that eventually evolved over the years, and I'm sure all you know, into the Celt ETC when he found the Celts and created a new meta there, too. And people who played against Huang, they hated Huang. They might still hate Huang. It's not fun. But people like you and I who watch Huang, oh, we enjoy it. And I'm not sure if you knew this or noticed this at all, but many months back, he just kind of disappeared. Uh, he had a YouTube channel that was deleted. That was gone. He wasn't playing the game. He wasn't active. He wasn't streaming. And for a guy who had played thousands upon thousands of games and produced lots of good memories for many of us, we were all upset. He was gone for six, seven, maybe eight months. And I honestly was like, well, maybe that's it for Huang. Maybe he's done with the game. Clearly, if a channel was deleted, maybe he just felt like it was best to move on. But he's back, my friends. He has returned and people have been so freaking excited about it. Uh, there are people in his chat asking him questions when he was streaming on Twitch. Now, Huang doesn't use a mic or anything. Huang doesn't really even use a cam for the most part. But Huang will occasionally chat. And one of my favorite screenshots, I don't know if someone asked if he was too old for the game or what, but is this one right here. Love it. He, he, all right, he's still in good shape. Like to hear the confidence, Huang. Anyways, um, so especially the Latin American community get really excited about it. There's a lot of people uh, who are excited about Huang and enjoy Huang there. And so... Uh, they someone hosted a show match with Huang, put some money on the line up against Beery, who's known as being a very aggressive player, and that's exactly what we have here, folks. So uh, happy that Huang is back. This was actually a fifth game and a best of five, and this is just gonna be a classic. Trust me, you're gonna want to keep your eyes peeled. Both these two are just maximum entertainment. So it's not Celts for Huang. Um, it's Aztecs. It's Berbers for Beery, and Berbers have slightly faster villagers in Dark Age. And again, these two make it messy, right? They just produce completely different types of games. I did say that I would have a Legend of Beery video eventually. Spoilers, it will still come. Unfortunately, things got a little busy for me. But you'll still get to see the guy here. And what he's looking for is he's looking for Huang's base right now, okay? He's hoping that he could find any resource to, to steal um, or wall in with those two villagers. And that's pretty bad for your economy. Uh, if you're running around with two villagers. These guys haven't brought in any resources, right? So, anyways, Beery's on the move. He has correctly figured out that, okay, well, Huang's not over here. And he sees the gold. That's exciting, but you don't necessarily want to deal with that. And then you see the villager with the bow and arrow. And, well, there goes Huang. And, or not Huang, sorry. There goes Beery. Beery's just going to take that boar. He walked across the map to steal the boar. Pretty ridiculous, just beery things. So, Huang sees this, and this is just starting this game off with a with a bang, right? Like, this is so different. And Huang could maybe try, if he wanted to, uh, come try and block this, but he's not. Beery's concerned. I mean, that is a long way to walk. That villager should die. It had loom, so it could take some damage from the initial shots. But Beery, I mean, this takes some skill. He's brought his scout over so he can block the boar. And meanwhile, Hong is kind of like, where is it? Can I block it now? What happened? Obviously got here a little bit too late. Also is extremely unlucky for Huang, as Beery is going to grab the boar now, that uh, Huang didn't actually see this boar. So that's kind of funny. He could maybe try and steal it if he wants to. But yeah, there was some money on the line for this. Community was really excited about it. Everyone's happy to see Huang back. These birds are excited. Look how happy these birds are. They're like, woo, Huang is back. Yay, Huang. We like Huang. Bring all the birds. Oh, it's a Huang party. Yeah, woo. Okay, that got weird. But yeah, people are real happy about it. And I'm happy about it too. Uh, funny little side story. So listen to this, right? People were asking me about Huang. Now, back in the day, you couldn't download player pro you couldn't download recorded games from player profiles. There were no player profiles. For the first like year and a half of VE, okay? So I had Huang's email, and we would talk on the regular, right? One of my favorite memories was when Huang, was when, like, I saw uh, a player, Nikov, who's from Argentina, ranting about the Celts and ranting about Huang, right? 
I don't know where it was. He was just like, it's so dumb. Like, it's so stupid. Like, blah, blah. He was just tilted, right? It's not a big deal. Anyway, so he did that. And then, like, an hour later, I get an email from Huang. And he's like, send you... The description was like, send you my wreck. And he's like, watch me kill Nikov. <laughs> oh, so funny. Anyway, so I have his email, right? So when he was gone for a month, I was like, okay, that happens. People step away. When he was gone for two or three, I was like, okay, whatever still happens. When he was gone for five or six, I began to worry a little bit. People were asking me. So I reached out to him via email as we we're watching Beery just waltz through Huang's base. This is just the most ridiculous game. So I emailed him, said, hey, Huang, I'm worried about you. Like, Age of Empires 2 community wants to know what's up. And I was especially concerned because his YouTube channel disappeared, which if I had to speculate, I'd say maybe he was like, he got really frustrated with the game or something. And maybe he felt like maybe I've got to do something else in my life or something. So I don't know exactly what it was. He didn't tell me. Um, but I emailed him and got no response, right? No response whatsoever. So he's back the other day. Everyone's freaking out about it. And he's streaming, playing some games. And I was like, hey, Huang. I was like, nice to see you. He's like, sup, Tristan. How are you? And I said, good. Did you get my email? Guys, he responded to my email right before I recorded this video. <laughs> he, so I feel like, I mean, I, I struggle with my emails as well, as Beery is still continuing to be the most annoying person he could possibly be. Uh, but I feel like maybe this is a one-sided relationship. Do you think Huang likes me more than I like him? Like, what's the deal there? I'm pretty sure that I I uh, am, am the one who is the most obsessed with the other in the whole relationship. So, anyways, we continue on here. So, so, to talk about the game, sorry for all the weird little stories. I, full disclosure, just had way too much coffee and am super travel stressed right now because I'm going to be traveling uh, and busy. And, oh, oh, trap? Trap? Traparuski? No. No trap. Um, So, this has turned into a fast castle game, and both players recognize it, okay? Beery realizes as both players lose the scout especially, Wong is walling. And Huang's got, you know, back gold. Huang's taking some of the deer. He just knows. I, I don't have the food myself to really necessarily kill him in early castle. Uh, or sorry, early feudal. So we're going to castle. In terms of resources collected, if you're curious on that, it's been fairly close, but Huang is a little bit ahead. Just barely. Um, and it's Berbers versus Aztecs here. So um, what I should be, you know, breaking down is kind of how this plays out. And basically, Aztecs suit Huang's style very well because Huang is not a well-balanced player. He's not, okay? Like, the worst thing for Huang to do would, would be to try tightrope walking. He, he would just fall off instantly. He's got zero balance whatsoever. Huang loves to send tons of villagers onto gold, um, use the market a lot to buy and sell resources. But what Huang does a good job of, and what makes him so good, is he commits to whatever his strategy is and he's really good with the timings right so as this bird is still these birds are still dancing here i, I don't know what's happening it's super weird um and beery's actually really good at, at, at that as well so that's why it's fun to watch these two play against each other so and, and with the aztecs being up against the berbers you have to think berbers have cheaper stable units uh and in a fast castle war you're probably thinking there's going to be some monks involved for the Aztecs. Very nice job from Beery. This villager has been walking a lot. But she gets to rest now and eat some deer. That's exactly what I want after a long day's work. Is to just eat some raw deer at my town center. Oh, it's so nice. There's the market for Huang. You might be thinking, but wait, T90, this is weird. Huang doesn't have the food. He this what is this? He needs more food to go to Castle Age. Oh my goodness. What a mistake. But now he's like, all right, just sell all, sell it all. And he's sending even more villagers to gold here. Theory did have better food economy. So he didn't really have to do that. Didn't have to sell as much. Beery also going to gold. And Beery going for a barracks now. Now there is a difference between the two civilizations right now. And when we talk about momentum... This can be really important, and it is the fact that the Eagle can be created in Dark Age and then gets a bit of a boost in Castle Age. 
So what you could do in a similar situation in theory is you could make a scout and then upgrade that to Lycab. And I think it would be very worth it at least to make one to see what Huang is doing. But my point is that you can't make a mini version of a knight. I, I like Cav's a different unit. The scout's a different unit, right? So um, it's nice for Huang to be able to produce some stuff right now. And he could turn that into more barracks as well if he wishes to. But as you can see, I mean, he has not dropped the second barracks. He has the wood for it. So that clearly means he's saving that wood for something else. And Huang is never one to shy away from aggression. Here he comes. But Beery himself also is Mr. Aggressive. And here he comes. And he's got a scout on the way. And so it's one villager. Nope. Two villagers from Huang. Two villagers from Beery. One guy's carrying a hammer. And the other is a pickaxe. And then these two have baskets. Who will win? I mean, if they could actually fight with those weapons, I'm pretty sure baskets would lose pretty hard. But Okay. So the Eagles are going to pay off because in Castle Age, even before the Eagle Warrior upgrade, your Eagle Scout goes up to 7 base attack, which is Rex's Scout. And so Eagles pay off. And then we have another Barracks from Huang and then the Monastery. Now here comes Beery with another Scout. Again, the Scout's going to be really helpful against any monks. But so far, not so good for Beery because his whatever his plan was to build here is not going to happen. And he's losing some Eco here. So that, that's not pretty. This guy gets to survive, though. All right, there will be a monk on the way. And it's double barracks equals from Huang. And for the time being, a little awkward for Huang. If he hops out with the monk, the scout will be there. So this could be tough times for him. Knights are definitely changing things for Beery. And expect this game to be very, 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 very messy. The patience with the scout is awesome. The monk hops out, and will Huang get the conversion? He will, because Beery misclicked. <laughs> Beery thought he killed the monk and then clicked away. I don't know exactly how that went down, but that's a pretty big deal there, because that is a full HP knight there. and That allows you to hold this position, or otherwise, maybe it could have all fallen apart for you. Look at him! He had six monks queued up in the same monastery. <laughs> Huang Eco is so funny. But again, he commits, and he's always very active. There's not a lot of time before he decides to move forward or make any decisions. Okay, so Beery's like, okay, monks are now going to become a problem for me. I need the ne I need to upgrade to Lycav. He only sees one monastery, but he sees double barracks as well. So a combination of knights and Lycav can be great, because you need to utilize those Lycav against the monks, and then the knights against the eagles. That's the idea. Now, you could... Oftentimes consider pikemen in Huang's position because that's that has bonus damage against the calf, but you need actual food economy for that. And well, that, that's not Huang's plan. Huang is just planning monks. One of my favorite things about Huang is how he moves like a bot. He moves like an AI. This looks like an AI. It's a human though. Yeah, there you go. Move. There's there's Huang, the AI of Huang moving forward. And he's getting monk upgrades. Now, when you get monk upgrades with Aztecs, you get more HP on your monks per upgrade. So he got Sanctity. He's even getting Fervor now. These are going to be some tanky monks. And the Eagles just perfectly blocking off these monks. And the extra HP is going to allow some conversions. And this can snowball pretty quickly on you if you're uh, in Beery's position. So I think he was hoping he would have been able to clear the monks without losing the knights. But, hey, I mean, it's only two knights. He's still got more units on the way, and he's now picking off reinforcements, and this is huge. Huang can really struggle with multitasking. Instead, it's more about, I'm going to be in your face and kill you all the time. Look, no hesitation. He's going to fly right into Beery's base with these eagles. But the eagles are now separated from the crew, but the eagles are now in, but there's still knights here. And the monks want conversions, and Beery, my friend... You have just made a mistake. Huang converted two more knights. That's just Aztec monks for you guys. Aztec monks are really, really strong. Again, you need light cap. Um, and then light cap do a little bit more bonus damage. And then if you lose your knights, uh, lose your unit, I guess, or your light cap, it's not as valuable um, for the opponent to have. Two town centers for Beery. He's producing villagers out of them. So he's got the villager lead. 
Wong has done a great job. His one town center has been producing vills, so it's not like he hasn't been producing villagers. And I would say it's still a really close game. That eagle loss from Huang was, was really bad. Um, I, I understand the idea, but he didn't really get the value from leaving his eagles exposed there. So Huang is just going to hope to make a couple more eagles. But Huang loves his monks and wants more conversions right now. Now Huang's exposed, but his monks notice this. And Beery notices that he's been noticed. And another knight gets converted. I don't know how Huang gets these conversions, man. That's a 2 HP knight that will be as good as new soon. And Huang is looking for those other knights. Beery's realizing now, I've got to stop giving him knights. <laughs> Huang has as many knights as Beery does. Like, I've got to go for light cav. Is Huang paying attention? Of course he is. And good luck killing those monks. Beery, this could be bad. You got to at least kill the monks. But in the process of committing, you lose so many knights. And Huang now has eight knights. He just returned to the game. He's like, oh, I didn't know Aztecs got knights. Hmm. I thought, I thought Aztecs couldn't make stable units. That knight's going to switch sides. That guy's going to be very confused. He's like, what? Who are my friends? Who am I supposed to be teamed with here? Explain me the details. And this is bad for Beery, man. There's so many monks. Like, now you've reached a number of monks where you'll convert the like have no problem. Because multiple monks converting at the same time means the conversions come a little bit faster. So Beery is in full panic mode, and he's hoping the like have will work. But I'm sure he's seen this, you know, Beery's experience. He's been in this situation before, whether it's been against Wong or against others. And he knows this can't be great. Wong is getting redemption now, guys. And with redemption, as another knight switches sides, with redemption, he's going to be able to convert the stables and the light cap pop out from Beery, hoping to kill the monks. It's actually not that bad. There's a pretty good job. Right here, there's only four monks. But there's still so many knights. And there's more monks on the way, I'm sure of it. All right, so this is where it gets fun. Also, that monk there, Light Cav, that's going to be a dead monk. So Huang, he is he is now experienced a taste of stable units. And he's like, oh my goodness, I want more of that. But my opponent won't give me any more knights because he's not stupid. So I need a way to have more stable units. I'm addicted to it. Give me stable units or give me death. And I don't want to choose death. So he converts to stable. Now... This is a little Easter egg in our game that the devs added a couple years back. Because, like, in the past, you convert a stable with Aztecs. You couldn't do anything with it, right? You can't make stable units, right? There's actually a unit in there. And it looks really cool, and it's called a Zolato Warrior. And you can get upgrades for them and everything. You can't get armor because Aztecs don't get access to armor. But you can get attack, at least. So Wong <laughs> is making Zolato Warrior. <laughs> And he didn't hesitate at all. He's like, yeah, let's do it. But he's not showing it either. Like, that's kind of what's funny. Now, if you sit back and you think about it, you could know in Beery's position, oh, he's making Zolato Warriors. But you're, like, dropping TCs. You're making Vils. You're running around. You're microing army. You're not looking directly at those flags. You're probably not thinking about it. Now... Huang loves the market. He knows how important that is. So he's going to convert that too. So now he has another market. He's going to convert the blacksmith as well. Converting a couple units here. Beery's trying, right? He's got very weak knights. Berbers have very weak knights. Uh, monks, excuse me, not knights. And Huang now sends the first Zolata warrior out. And now he sends all the Zolata warriors out. And he says, are you excited I'm back, Beery? Because you are getting Zolato, bro. <laughs> there's there's quite a clang when these things fight. <laughs> they look really cool. They look amazing. You know, what's cool about it is the... I don't know if you've ever seen horses randomly on the map. But it looks like a Jaguar Warrior mounted one of those horses. And the horse looks a bit different than any of the scouts or the knights. I guess it's just the lack of armor. Which, again, very fitting, right? They lack armor. Uh, Beery 
says, this isn't going well for me, so let's counterattack. Let's go to Huang's base. Let's look at his eco. Look at this eco, by the way. This eco is abysmal. Like, this is, this is Huang's, this is the winning economy. What in the world? Anyways, great job from Beery to try that, because it's necessary. But Huang, he doesn't really need his eco now, because he's just going to convert Beery's eco. This is what Huang does well. He always, regardless of what happens, the main push will not die. He always focuses on that main push. He heals up his units. He keeps them alive. Okay, Beery, just passing. Okay, Huang forgot about his woodline. These villagers are all going to gold now. Whatever. Huang's still pushing. Now, in these moments is when it would be really nice to kill all the monks because Huang is, in theory, distracted. But Huang is paying attention. And this Lotto Warriors actually work perfectly to provide a bit a bit of a buffer. Berber's the Lotto Warrior! Berber's the Lotto Warrior! I've never seen Berbers with Zolotos. <laughs> okay. Hey, I mean, Beery killed a lot of the monks. But there's still more monks. These villagers are getting slaughtered. These villagers are kind of sl getting slaughtered as well. And anyways, this very messy, silly game is going to end here as Beery congratulates him. Because again, it was a show match. Um, so there was some money on the line. It was a it was a competitive series. And it's just all to celebrate the return of the king, the return of Huang. And I'm I'm happy that the guy's back. His style is just so free, just insane. He produces some ridiculous games. And it just, it cracks me up. A quick look at the resources here. Uh, Huang did collect more. He did not collect more wood. He did not collect more food, but he collected way more gold, uh, as that was the majority of his economy here. Uh, realistically, Beery just fell into the classic trap of thinking I had more utility from making knights. And I think Beery should, in theory, win this game after killing these eagles. Like, I think if after that point, he only makes light cap. And he only shows light cap because Huang doesn't have a buffer for the monks. The monk play shouldn't work. But once Huang got the ball rolling and was able to convert enough knights and then was able to convert the stables and add the Zlatos, which was actually a winning play here. At that point, it was too little too late. And the Huangster got the job done. So I do want to say to all the real true Huang fans out there, the guys who were excited upon his return even before I got this video out, um... I, I just want to say how cool it is that you're doing that for him, man. Uh, again, I don't know Huang that well. I've only exchanged some emails back and forth with him. I merely made videos about the guy half a decade ago. But um, I could just tell. Like, he doesn't speak. You know, he doesn't have a mic. He doesn't have the best of English. But, uh, you know, I was watching his stream and all these people showing up. It was like, Huang, Huang, Huang. He's so happy about Huang. Say the legend returns. The king returns. Someone was like, shouldn't he get that upgrade? And I saw a message that was like, how dare you question our king? Just like stuff like that, man, is really cool to see. Um, he's a special player, and we this is a special game, and we need as much variety as possible. What is this mining camp? What is that? Okay, all right, we end the video there. But anyways, thank you guys for being awesome. Age of Empires 2 community is awesome. You're good to me. You're good to Huang. You're good to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will be keeping an eye on Huang and uploading more Huang games in the future. Don't you worry. Oh, and Beery. I've got an eye on you, dude. One final thing before I let you all go. I am headed to Australia. And according to my YouTube analytics, there are quite a few people watching from Australia. And I thought, if I'm headed over there, that we should do something cool. So if you happen to be anywhere near Sydney, Australia, I'm hosting an Age of Empires 2 meetup on August 12th at 7 p.m. local time. There will be drinks. There will be food. You'll get to hang out with other Age of Empires 2 fans and get a chance to meet me, take some photos and all that. I put all the information in the description if you're interested in this. Ultimately, the goal is just to have a good time, but if there's computers there, we might do some gaming too. So again, just check the link and buy a ticket if you're interested. Would love to meet you, and thanks for watching.